Hey everyone, what is up? Uh, I wanted to kind of do a bonus episode after our last final episode of finishing up our TikTok app. And that's because I wanted to show a little of what's involved in submitting to the App Store. Um, I clearly can't just rip off TikTok and submit it to the App Store. Uh, you'll get rejected real quick. You can't just emulate exactly what they do. Um, so you have to have some type of different feature. And so in this one, I showed what I did, some of the changes I did just for looks, uh, I mean, I want it to look a little bit different than TikTok. I also wanted to function a little bit different. Uh, after doing the friends feature in the TikTok app, I really like the idea of just like doing a private TikTok so that only you only have a friend section. There's no public thing. So maybe you want to share like short form videos with your friends and not make it public. Um, and so in this version, I called it Privy. Um, let's reload it real quickly. Privy. Uh, stay private share freely stay private was what i said um and there's a few things i did so first the app icon is different and i didn't really touch on this in the previous one because it is pretty straightforward uh in the actual bundled expo project you have this assets and then images section and you have a couple you have the adaptive icon favicon icon and splash so they should all be pretty self-explanatory um, the main ones are the splash and, I and the uh, icon sections. So when we quickly reload, that's the splash section. And so what I did is you could just copy and paste the actual file that they have and upload your own logo and then rebuild and then the same thing for icon. And this will be the icon that shows up in the app store. And so it's important to call out that you can't, you have to do a, a full rebuild for these changes to take effect and resubmit to the app store. So that's the first thing. Second thing, when we reload, the login and sign up page are exactly the same. So I'm not gonna go over it too much. I just added the logo there um, so that it's different. And, and I changed the background to black. As for this home section, I did change out the layout a little bit. Um, the icons on certain videos get kind of, especially this one specifically, it gets uh, white logos on this bright video kind of get lost and so I put this the logos on the top here they do the same as I think they have messages uh, we have profile that's we go we could have like and unlike as well and then the bottom bar is exactly the same but without the home page the home page is the friends page so the same thing I had to fill up the space I added the search bar down here instead of in the top right corner and then I added this like little logo or this little section where it just shows the last comment so if you click on this, you could also do the messages and I'll just show the most recent comment. So just to see what's going on in this activity. So if we click here, hello world, it'll come down and then we can see it changes to hello world, the text. So it's just like a little, nice little different touch. And then we could also go to the profile here as well and we can like and unlike. Oh, also for the profile, I removed the, since it is private, it's not that important how many likes your your video gets or how many followers or how many people are following. Um, it's not try to, to try to go to following. Yeah, so I removed that section and then I just made a full view here so we could see like view more. If you really want to see someone's feed, you could just go to their profile and click through their specific posts. Um, and it's going to be the same post because we only have one follower in the friends section. Other things is activity is the same, new followers is the same. You can see who started following you. Uh, the difference here is that you'll only get their feed if each side follows each other. So it's the same thing. Like if I follow someone and they follow me back, then their content will show up in the feed and that's it. Otherwise, it will not show here. And then settings. So when submitting to the App Store, there's a few important callouts. Since this is user generated content, a big thing with specifically Apple, you're probably gonna need this for Android as well, but we're gonna cover specifically Apple because they are the, the, the strictest. If you are able to get into the Apple App Store with all of their requirements, getting submitting that build to Android should be a piece of cake um, because there's certain things that are required for both and certain things that are required for Apple, but there's more required for Apple. The first major thing is user generated content. So obviously when someone comes to the app, they could upload a video. Um, and let's say there's a bad actor 
it's, it's the internet, let's be realistic here, they can upload whatever video they want. So there has to be a mechanism to be able to report this content if it's inappropriate um, in any way. So if I find the content inappropriate, I have to have, I have to give another user the ability to report that content. And so what I did is see this little flag icon in the top left section. If we click this, are you sure you want to report? Click report. And this is required by Apple to get into the App Store. And what this does, it creates a new row in what we have a report model down here. And it just reports the person submitting that request, their user ID, the person who's being reported, their user information, and then the video itself that's being reported. And what has to happen is just you as the creator has to be able to review that content and within 24 hours and deem whether it was actually inappropriate content, then you have to take it down. Um, otherwise, you can leave it up. Uh, the, another thing is you could, let's say, put a mechanism in here so that let's say one person just reports that they just don't like the content. You shouldn't do it automatically, but you could put an automatic trigger of like, okay, well, if there's 100 people on the platform and 20 of them find the content inappropriate, that's a pretty clear indication that uh, it's probably inappropriate and should be taken down. So you could do that automatically. So you could, based on the video ID, like do a, if this has, if this video has more than three reports or more than 10 reports, whatever the number is, just delist it automatically. Um, so if I had enough users, that's probably what I would do based on the amount of people that are using it and how many people have reported it. You could do that automatically. Also, you have to be able to report um, inappropriate, I guess, people or users. Let's say in this comment section, they're being aggressive or they're saying something inappropriate. Um, you have to be able to go to their profile and report this user as well. So it's the same thing, but for users, uh, and it, technically the, the terminology is to block a user. Um, and it's the same thing that if, and technically in our app, you could block a user by just unfriending them, which is one way of blocking them, but then you could also report them so that uh, it, it goes under review. So those are two major things for specifically user-generated content. And I'll, I'll show, I'm going to submit this app to the App Store just so that people can log in and test it out themselves. And you can see this is the type of like app review you get. So first thing we just talked about, safety, user-generated content. Uh, method for filtering objectionable content, which you just covered, a mechanism for users to block abusive users, and then you have to review within 24 hours. Another one is, or actually we can log out. Another one is the ability to, when you sign up, terms of service. We need these terms of service to be able to tell the user what we're doing with their information um, and what they're agreeing to when they sign up. So this checkbox has to be required when they sign up. And so that's another one, the EULA, the terms uh, as well. And let's go see a design. That wasn't that important. That was just, I made some of the icons a little bit bigger. Oh, also on iPad, you have to account for iPad, which is a little annoying, but uh, previously the icons on the bottom part weren't showing in uh, appropriately. Okay, let's log in real quick. If I can spell. The icons down below here um, weren't showing up correctly. They're getting cut off on iPad, so that was a small fix that they requested. Um, legal privacy data collection. This one was don't be requesting any if you need to request contacts and then don't actually use the contacts, um, then don't put that permission on there. Or if you're requesting location, not actually using location, then don't require that. If you are, then you have to state why you're using the information, what you're doing with that information. And then the last big one is being able to delete um, a user or delete their content. So you could do Technically, you should you could do like an email that allows them to reach out and delete their content. For this, it's not that big a deal. Honestly, in most cases, you should just give the user the ability to delete their own content. 
um, with no questions asked. And so what this does is it literally goes in. It, I don't want to do this right now because it'll delete uh, their user information and all the content they created because of this cascade. So you can see this cascade on delete. And so what this does is if this user object, so everything that references the user, which is basically everything in some way or another, uh, if every, anything that references the user gets deleted as well. So if this user, let's say hello at reactnativenerd.com is deleted, every video that they posted, every like, every follower, every comment, every chat, uh, every chat group, and every report, every time they've been reported actually since, uh, will all be deleted in the database as well. So I don't want to do that just yet. Uh, but that's also a requirement by Apple. And uh, for my personal thing, the only thing I added on the screen was the ability to upload a video uh, without just having to use like the camera. You could also upload from your files as well. Um, other than that, it's basically the same app that we created uh, with all the main functionality and just styled a little bit differently. So that's the goal here. Like the goal here is to learn how to build all the basic functionality and put your own spin on it. Uh, put your own features on it and build it up from there. Um, of course, this isn't perfect, but it's a great base to be able to add and to be able to modify however uh, you see fit. And so after we have all this, after we've got um, all of our features and we want to be able to submit it to the App Store. So how do we do that? So EAS actually makes it super simple. Um, let's show bookmarks. So if you go to expo.dev, um, you're going to have to create an account. And this is our account. So just a quick look into what it looks like. And to get started, it's free. Uh, of course, if you're doing a bunch of builds and uh, over the air updates, it starts to, they will make money off of you some way or another. But just to get started, it is free. And to use this, uh, you have to use the CLI and you're gonna do, you're gonna install the EAS CLI. And what that gives you the ability to do is to be able to do EAS build. If we type that in right now, we have this pop-up. If this doesn't pop up, then you need to install this CLI. But you can build for each platform. We're gonna select all. And of course I need to log in, so EAS login. So I'm not gonna go through that whole thing right now, but once you do that, um, this logs into your account that you've created in here and it'll ask you to link the two. Um, once you do that, you can do EAS build and then that'll build each file itself. So it'll basically run npm run build, but in the cloud and then submit, you can submit that code to iTunes or iTunes connect through here. So it'll build the files for iOS and Android and it'll use all the data that we have defined in EAS JSON. So in production, it'll use this Expo public super base URL, the Anon key in the public bucket. So it'll, it'll get wrapped up in a, into a bundle. And then you could do an EAS submit. And then this will give you options of what type of build. So like, let's say we have 20 builds and we just want to submit the most recent one. We could do that here as well. And once we click submit, it'll take some time and you can see each of the processes here. So we can see like um, iOS store submission, iOS build, and if something goes wrong, we can see it in this dashboard here. Once it's in here, it'll this will connect to your iTunes account. So this is where you're gonna need, this is where you're gonna need um, a iTunes developer account. And you can see a lot of my apps that have been are super old that I took off the App Store, and we can see Privy app here. Um, and we can see like we submitted, we got rejected. Hopefully by the time I publish this video, everything gets worked out because I made all the changes. Um, and once you're in here, you can go to test flight. And when you do an EAS submit, a specific build, it'll show up here. So let's say that our most recent build is version 1.0.5. It'll show up here and you're going to have to click manage um, compliances and you just have to click approve. And then this will be available for test flight users. So right now I can have a test flight account 
again, you have to have an iTunes developer account, which is $99 a year, I think it is. Um, and then you could test it on actual devices and actual native build. And then in here is where you, once you're okay with that test flight build, you can do all the submissions. So you have to provide some screenshots, at least three of them, I, I believe it is, of the app and what it does. You get the description. Uh, you have to do the privacy. Oh, this is a good call out as well. So we need to have a privacy URL. So we have to give the users the ability to go to a website and see the terms, uh, get the privacy policy information, and a support URL as well. So say if they want to reach out, they have a problem with the app, they want to be able to fix something, update something, or delete their account, you have to give them an uh, email and a URL to navigate to. Once we do all that, then we click Add for Review. Um, you're going to have to do the privacy, you have to do the ratings, um, any pricing, are is free, any subscriptions. Um, and so once we click Add for Review, then it'll get submitted. Usually it takes a couple days to get feedback. Sometimes it could take a couple hours, sometimes it can take up to seven days. It really all depends because they're being manually reviewed by an actual person uh, every single time. And then once it finally gets approved, then we can submit it to the App Store, and then you'll be able to find it in the App Store. So it is a long process. You probably will get rejected at first, even if you have everything. Sometimes, actually a lot of times, you just need to set a screenshot so I can even go back here. Um, I have a lot of conversation back and forth, and I literally just have a screencast of showing how to use the feature that we just went through. So you have to put it out like step by step, log in, go to this messages, click flag, there's the report. Even though this is already here on submitted, they're still, still complaining about it. And I think that happens every single time I do it. The annoying part is you can't submit like a, a video be as you submit a new build to show them how to use it. First, they have to reject it, and then you have then you can do this whole app review reply back and forth. Um, so it's just a process. It's not that hard. It's just a little time consuming. Um, so yeah, there we go. I hope that was helpful. Um, there's not a ton of code that I want to go over in this one because all the functionality is the same outside of just adding a new um, table for reports, which we've already done a bunch of tables and. It, all it does is submits a row into that table that we could review later. Um, and everything else is the same. We got profile, we got chat, we got messages, we got posts, uh, we got friends. And if anything, we actually took away some functionality from the actual TikTok to make it a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more cleaner, I think. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to hello at reactnativenerd.com. Peace.